The following interview was conducted with Charles Kuesha, the current president of the Graduate Student Association for Purdue University. Uh, the interview took place on Tuesday, November 27, 2012, and it's for the Pro Purdue Oral History Program. The interview is Catherine Marquis, former Oral History Library. Chris, good afternoon. Thank Hello. you very much. How are you? Okay. Tell us a little about um, where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years? Of course. Well, I was born September 8, 1988 at St. John's Hospital in Detroit. Okay. Uh, I'm the son of Krzysztof Kulesza and Paula Kulesza. Uh, my father is from Poland. He came here in the 1980s. And he is a, well, a car designer for Ford Motor Company. Uh, my mother uh, worked in the medical field for a number of years until she had me. Um, so I, after being born in Detroit, we moved out to Troy, Michigan, which is a suburb of about 80,000 people. Absolutely beautiful city. Uh, attended Brookfield Academy uh, until fourth grade, then went to St. Hugo of the Hills, then attended uh, Notre Dame Preparatory for high school. Okay, tell us a little about high school. What was that? Uh, was that located in South Bend or, uh, or no? Uh, Even though it has, cause it has Notre Dame name with it. Yes, no, that was, uh, it's located in Pontiac, Michigan. Okay, okay. And uh, fantastic school. Pretty, relatively small private school. Um, but I made tremendous friends there that I still have to this day. Uh, one of the reasons why I, I went there was because I originally thought that I was going to be much more involved in music, and they had one of the best music programs sure. uh, in the area for private schools, so I figured, well, I would go there and uh, once I got to undergraduate, however, I kind of dropped the music for other things, unfortunately. <laughs> did, you, was it, did you play an instrument, or what, what was your interest in music? Yes, I played uh, alto saxophone for a uh, symphonic band, but then for jazz band, I was a baritone saxophone player. Do you still keep up with it? Not really. Oh, okay. I, I, I take it out every now and then, but okay. Uh, okay. it's not really as serious as Let me as ask you a question. How did your father happen? Did he have a, a come to the States in the 1980s? Did he have a, a lead on a position? Or? No, he was actually here uh, visiting family okay. uh, in Ohio. And he was asked at that time to come and play soccer, actually, uh, in Michigan while he was still visiting family. And there was quite a bit of political turmoil at the time with the Solidarity Movement in okay. Poland. Okay. So uh, he decided to stay in the United States. Oh, very good. Well, that worked out very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then after uh, prep school, then, then came college. Yes. Yeah. Uh, went to Michigan State University. I uh, majored in economics and political science. And uh, there I also had the honor of interning for the Michigan House and Senate. Well, tell us a little about that. That's kind of nice. Yes. Uh, how I, that came about. Um, I submitted an application just regularly to uh, Representative Amos, uh, who is a representative from Oakland County, which is where Troy is in. And I was only there for about a month or so because um, she just didn't have a lot of work going on in the office. So I was transferred to State Representative Dan Acovetti after that, who was the Minority Vice Chair of Appropriations Committee. And it was quite interesting at the time. It was a, a very unstable time politically for Michigan because it was going through a big budget crisis. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be on staff while the state government shut down uh, because of the budget crisis. So, but then the office ended up running out of money. They couldn't keep me on anymore. So I then went over to the Senate. And I uh, interned for the Senate for four months until I was elected uh, chairman of my undergraduate government. Nice. Great experience. It was excellent. Wonderful. And uh, I also had the honor of serving as vice chair of the East Lansing Historic District Commission, which I was on the commission for about three years. I served um, on the, I was served as vice chair for the last eight months of my term. I had to resign to come to do graduate work here. Okay. Um, which what's, what's the what is there is there especially what tell us about that association is, what sort of is, is historical? Yeah, so it's a commission that's from the city. Uh, it, it's a, essentially if any individual who lives in a historic district wants to have any changes done to their home, mm -hmm. they have to come to our commission to seek approval before they're able to do any work. Right, because it's been preserved or uh, certain 
requirements or specifications are attached to that house. And they right. can't do it without approval. Exactly. So they maintain it. Like they have similar other, um, Lafayette has a similar thing too. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Did you get to go out to look at some of the houses? I did. Oh, I did. Oh, they were f fantastic. I mean, some people just do absolutely wonderful work in East Lansing trying to preserve their homes. It, right. Absolutely wonderful work. Right. Um, do they uh, do they have to submit a budget if they want? Do, what are some of the things that they might want to do? But they want to. Keep, you have to keep it in that. The fr in the time period in which the house is, is that right? Right, so like some individuals want to change windows. Okay. Either the windows are getting old, but what they have to do is make sure that the windows emulate what the old ones look like. Um, some of them have to put on new roofs for one reason or another, so to make sure that it maintains as much of the old style as possible. Okay. Uh, they have to get only certain materials can be used and such. Um, so things like that. Yeah, that's very good. And they have all kinds of open houses. Do they, do they have an open house after the house is done? They probably do. Uh, depends on the owner. Depends on the owner. Some, <laughs> some, some will, some won't. <laughs> I don't know I want these people crazy through my house, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Then after, how did you have, then what, uh, what happened after you finished? Is that when you came to Purdue after you finished your college? or? Yep. Right afterwards, I was awarded a Ross Fellowship here. Okay. Um, to study political science, uh, specifically state of mobile government. So I decided to uh, come here to get a PhD in political science. Sounds good. Well, did you do your master's here as well? Yes, I did. And now you're at the PhD. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the Grad Student Association for Research. Tell us a little bit about the association and then some of the challenges, initiatives, and programs which you undertaken during your term of office. Yes, yeah, so the Purdue Graduate Student Government, number one mission is to represent graduate students, be the official voice of the graduate student population to the administration and all other relevant actors. Um, what we do as well, uh, we have a significant portion that is dedicated to service to graduate students. So most of our budget goes towards grants. We give out research grants to graduate students, travel grants to those wanting to present something at a conference. Uh, we're just starting next semester a child care grant. So for students who have children, so that it would be easier to afford uh, Wonderful. child care. Wonderful. So I would say um, in terms of challenges, that would definitely be one of them. A uh, number of graduate students, very difficult on a graduate student stipend to be able to afford all the living expenses. So uh, we decided to start this up as a pilot program for next semester just to see how it works out. And if it's successful, we'll add more money onto the budget for in the coming years. Right. Um, but a couple other things that we've been trying to um, work on, um, of course, with the uh, presidential transition, uh, trying to uh, give our perspective to President Have you Michigan. had a chance to meet him? Yes, oh. multiple times. Okay, well tell us a little about that. I would have to say every time you meet up with him, you just see how much more he's learned about the university. Uh, when he came in, of course, he didn't have any academic background or experience, which that was one thing that the Purdue graduate government was hoping for originally, that there would be somebody who had been through the tenure process before. But every time you can definitely see he has a real passion for this university and really cares and really seems to be taking this sure. job quite seriously. Yeah. So every time... Just by the very fact that he's been meeting all, all with people over the last several months. Right. So every time I meet with him, I become more and more impressed by him, I would say. And I'm actually getting quite excited to have him come on as president next semester. You're right up with his Harley. You know? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but he seems to have a lot of good ideas, too. So um, definitely we went over a couple of uh, things that we're looking into, like intellectual property rights for engineering students. Uh, how much of their own material can they keep um, in terms of their research on campus? He seems to be very interested in, in figuring that out. Sure. So it looks like it'll be good. Now, did you meet him did, with all the grant as part of the uh, members of your association, or were there some other uh, groups that you also were uh, met? It was just us. Okay. It was it was um, three of our four officers. It was um, me with our vice president Blake Hilton and the secretary Swen Irwin. Um, Unfortunately, our treasurer, Fuchsia Hoover, was unable to attend. Okay, okay. So because she had class at the time. Okay. And, um, for about an hour, or how did you do that? Mm -hmm. It was about an hour. Just did you the leave a sort of a Q&A, or you had some questions, or he, well, how did, how, what was the format? 
It was kind of up and back. Okay. You know, generally informal. Uh, we had a couple questions and things that we wanted to bring up to him. Sure. And a couple things that he brought to us asking, you know, just simply how does it organization work and um, how are individuals elected to various positions and how, as graduate students, do you possibly have time to be able to be in this organization? <laughs> Which you know, sometimes it is a miracle that we're oh, able to yes, juggle all Oh yes, I know. It, Time management gets out of out of the way. Did you mention about the child care? Did you about, about the new thing that you're going to try next semester to him? Yes, and he actually said we were the tenth, like the tenth organization, the tenth group of individuals to bring up child care on campus being an issue. So um, it does yeah. seem as if not just us, but there are a lot of other groups on campus that really are looking into child care as being a, a very serious topic. How are you going, let me ask, how are you going to handle them? Can they go to the child care on campus, or are you going to give them, if, I, if, if a student applies, they'll get some money to use for child care at a place that they want to select? Or So right now, the on-campus facilities can become quite crowded. Um, so what we do is we're just going through financial aid, okay. and by submitting your FAFSA form, you'll be automatically qualified okay. into this grant. And the money would then be used for either or, but we're gearing this more towards being able to go off campus since okay. the one on campus is always so crowded. So you have, you're, going, you're going to get a grant, and with that money, you can use it for child care. It doesn't necessarily have to be the one on campus. It could be someplace in the community that's close to your home or wherever you live. Exactly. And um, are you going to, will there be a limit in how many uh, applicants are for the grants that will be awarded? Do you know that? Yes, for now there's going to be two okay. grants in next that's semester for $1,000 nice. each. Very, that's very nice. And, uh, any other new programs? Do you have any, or, what about orientation? Do you do orientation for the new grad students? We do convocation, okay. uh, which is essentially 700 to 800 graduate students in an auditorium, and we do a little bit of a presentation to them. Typically, the president of the Purdue Graduate Student Government um, will uh, be the master of ceremonies for that. So that was me this past year, which was a lot of fun, I would say. Yeah. I enjoyed it quite a bit. <laughs> Had you been a member um, before you became president? Yes. Uh, it started out a few years ago, well, rather 2010-2011 academic term. Um, I was al since I was always so active in my undergraduate years, I had hoped I would be able to be just as active here. Um, but the Senate position in my department was filled. Um, so rather, I just joined up on one of the committees, the Legislative and Strategic Planning Committee, and I was appointed as parliamentarian for first year. So I was parliamentarian, then I became secretary. So I was secretary of the organization last year, and then I was elected president. Oh, very nice. That's good. Okay. Um, any other in initiatives or any other comments on some things that you're thinking about or that's been discussed? Now, does your term run in, on a school year, academic year? Yes, it does. Okay. So it's, I'm done in April. Okay, okay. But one other thing I would say, we're, we're trying to get different organizations across campus that are not academically related together. One of the things or one of the issues has been um, PGSG is represented by academic departments, not so much by um, other organizations. Um, so, for instance, the Latino Graduate Student Organization doesn't have formal representation nor does the Black Graduate Student Association. So we're starting a new um, program. It's a President's Roundtable to bring these different organizations across campus together so that we can start talking about the issues um, on campus, simply because there is Where no Where does your program. representative come from? Just any, any of the schools, any grad student in any of the departments? Is that is sort of open? Is that how it is? Or? Yeah, so there's elections every year in the departments, and then they elect uh, a graduate student to be represented in our Senate. Okay. But we're adding somebody this year, or we're hoping to add somebody this year. Uh, veterinary students were actually represented by the undergraduate government. So right now we're in the process of trying to bring them from the undergraduate government over to the graduate student government. Sounds good. What do you do when you uh, wrap up and then you have something, a spring, let's say for the ones that are graduating, or what do you do? Uh, what we do is we have uh, Graduate Student Appreciation Week in April and we also typically put on a like a picnic a, a spring picnic okay. yeah so we, we uh, uh, bring outpost catering to campus they just set up a truck and they put 
grill hot dogs, hamburgers, veggie sure, burgers, sure. and then just hundreds of graduate students come and <laughs> where well, uh, there's food, there's right? Food. And you know, of course, eat. And we we do what we can to make sure that only graduate students are the ones eating the food, of course. But it can be difficult. <laughs> I brought a friend, <laughs> right? Two, two or three, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, let's talk a little about leadership. Your thoughts on a leader's role in the academic world as well as the career. Uh, the, professional world. Well, it's very interesting that you mention that because typically within graduate school, um, leadership isn't really something that's looked upon as being a, a, a good quality. Typically, when, when you're in graduate school, they typically want you to just stick with the department and not really do much else. In fact, okay. I even got some warnings from a few professors not to do anything but beyond okay. just doing your academic work. But I really think it is important because, you know, whenever it comes to writing a grant or when it comes to doing research, it's important that you're able to interact with other individuals okay. and a lot of times be able to bring groups together to do research and to advance knowledge. So I would say that leadership is just as important of a quality as, say, being able to do statistical analysis. Sure, right. Because without that kind of work, without being able to be effective, you really won't be able to get the research done in the first place. And you interact with people, and now that so much, much of the research has become interdisciplinary, you're dealing with bringing other people to the table from various other disciplines. And, mm -hmm. uh, some, and so you want to be able to um, make the decisions and come to some consensus and have somebody kind of coordinate project or however you want to do it. Exactly, very much so. And, and in fact, I'm uh, in psychology program as well on top of political science. Mm -hmm. So um, you always know whenever you get into a particular group that immediately the group then comes into different people playing sure. different roles. And just being able to have that leadership quality makes that just all the more smooth. Makes the page a lot easier. Right. There you go. Okay. Um, how about some hobbies, special things you like to do? Uh, beyond politics. Uh, <laughs> or including whatever. You know. Well, yeah, politics is definitely one of them. Uh, I happen to be a pretty big Star Trek fan myself, Doctor okay. Who, big, okay. you know, gotcha. sci-fi stuff. Um, big baseball fan as well, Detroit, what team, what team, Detroit, Detroit Tigers. And how do they do? I'm, I'm not really knowledgeable on baseball. I follow, like, say, football I do, but whatever. Uh, they just won the American League. Uh, championship. So they didn't. They didn't win in the World Series, but uh, uh, they went uh, zero to four. The, unfortunately, the team had a bit of a break because they got done with their games before the National League, okay. and they just kind of. Did you go up. to games when you were younger too? Maybe. Every once in a while. Okay, yeah, I did. That's nice. It's sort of. Fun. It's a. It's a. It's sort of fun. It's a. It's a nice pastime, and you. You know, you go as a young child, and it just. You know, fun and that, that sort of develops a big interest in you. Yeah, and I've never been to a baseball game where the Tigers have lost either. Don't break that record. I right? know. I'm hoping. <laughs> and they've gotten close sometimes. Sometimes it's been the ninth inning and they've been way down, but they just <coughs> happen to hit a home run or something and they end up winning. So <laughs> that sounds okay. Uh, do you have a Purdue tradition? Oh, you... Purdue tradition. Um, well, as a little bit of a. I guess, interest. when I was really, really young, I'm talking very young, like in grade school, okay. I used to be, love trains. I used to be train obsessed. I had two brothers that were that same way. Really? So I just kind of find it interesting that I loved trains so much when I was younger. And as I always talk about, you know, I have train videos. I would be and you had a lot of train sets, I'm sure. Oh, yes, oh, very much so. Right. And then all of a sudden the mascot, I'm coming here and it's a train. It's like, you know, was this destiny or something or what exactly happened? So, But I love the train for sure. I absolutely love the train. Well, they, they had that railroad relocation. We used to have the trains. You probably already told you to go through the downtown. There's a, isn't the model railroad club, isn't there a, is there a railroad club, a uh, student organization with railroad club? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. But it, I remember too, my brothers, and then you add pieces. Some Christmas, you know, you might get another tunnel or towns or something and more tracks, and, you know, it's, it's sort of nice to, and fathers always enjoyed that, too. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> oh, do you, an outstanding event? Anything that comes to mind? An outstanding event? Um, I would have to say at least the ones that were probably most just out of my mind were, of course, the PGSG callouts because that's what got me involved. But I think the best ones by far are the picnics because with the picnics you 
have all of these people, you have hundreds of graduate students coming together. Um, that by far is probably the, the most uh, memorable. And also the stuff that happens during uh, graduate student appreciation. There you week. go. I get you. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next stage, what are your thoughts is this time when you, when you finish, which will be in a couple of years? I yes. Well, there are very few individuals who study politics that actually like to practically do politics. But I'm one of the people who like to practically do politics. So I am hoping to uh, be a member of a state government at some point, um, okay. either um, working in the administration or working in or as of being a legislator or not. Uh, I definitely would like and to. And you're leaving the state open at this point because you're not real sure whether you go back to Michigan or stay in Indiana. It's too soon. Right. I am hoping to go back to Michigan if at all possible. I absolutely love the state. I love okay. the Great Lakes. But... Um, it all depends upon, of sure. course, the job market too, and if not, become a tenured professor. Okay. Do you like? To, are you doing? Have you done any teaching while you've been here? Any yes, uh, I taught my first class this past summer. It was Introduction to American Politics, okay. and I am now teaching Intro to Public Policy, and I absolutely love it. Very good. Very. How many students do you have? Right now, I have forty students. That's very good. Okay. Sounds good. Anything that um, I that you'd like to share with us that I forgot to ask or. Uh, I'll leave it up to you if you want to make any further comments. No, I would just... What did you think? Uh, let me ask you a question. Um, how did you happen to select Purdue because of its program, I mean, for the grad school? Right. One of, one of the things, there aren't too many professors that study state and local politics. It's kind of a, a little bit of an unappreciated subfield, I think. Mm -hmm. So we do have a number of individuals here that do study state and local politics. Okay. And a couple professors that study legislative behavior, Glenn Parker, Susie Parker, Erica Waldenberg. Sure. So I wanted to jump up on that um, on uh, that opportunity. Okay, sounds good. But we were going to make some any further comments or anything that you'd like to share. Oh, I would just like to say that I think it's especially with you know President-elect Daniels coming in, and some exciting times here. So I'm really optimistic about the way things you are going. You came with one president, and you'll be here for the next president, right? Right. Yeah. And PGSG recently, we just um, it, it's just been until recent where we've been able to use the student fee to fund our operations. So we went from having a very small budget, um, tens of thousands, to now having a budget of over $100,000. And it's going to go probably up to $300,000. So that really, well, then you've got, it's opening up a whole new arena for you. Yes. I mean. And the past two presidents, um, uh, Andy and Rebecca, were definitely instrumental in getting that passed. They did excellent work with that. Very good. That's nice. Okay. Chris, I want to thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Thank okay, you so much. Thank you. Okay.